The objectives of this talk is um, first of all to establish the relevance of the complex small problem, why is it important? Um, and then I'm going to be um, spending some uh, time on um, examining the finite net flow of um, the vertices of the convex small, um, which um, typically gets skipped over or it's seen to be um, a not too relevant uh, question. But it's actually quite relevant as we'll see because it will lead to um, the classification of IFS factors for which it's even relevant to ask the question of you know, what is the convex small. Um, and then I'm going to uh, discuss three different methods for different classes of IFS backholes, Brock classes, and also illustrate the methods with examples. Uh, and a couple of these methods actually are built on um, existing methods in the literature. The third method is not, it's, it's a new method. Um, so I'm currently finalizing this paper, which should be out in about a week. Um, I'll probably put it up on archive. And um, my, my thesis um, is from 2013, and I have done some additional work relative to the thesis, so that's why I'm still working on the paper. But it's about to be finished up. <coughs> so um, just to start with uh, the notations and the definition. So um, um, IFS fractals are um, generated by contractions. So this is in uh, fixed point form. So as you can see, if you plug in PK, you will get PK back. So uh, the factors um, in some sort of norm, either the Euclidean or another norm, um, you know, need to be contractive. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, looking at planar IFS fractals. So uh, just representing the factors um, in uh, complex numbers. Um, or um, you know, if you go to higher dimensions, and then you will need a rotation matrix. Uh, we'll be working with the, the Hutchinson operator over compact sets. Yeah. So Hutchinson has this uh, theorem that um, uh, this operator has an attractor. Um, so it can be uh, proven in Hausdorff metric using the Bonnet Fixed theorem. Uh, so uh, I'll be using this notation for the generic of T1 to Tn. So the indices, the indexes will run from 1 to n. And um, so we have this average generation, or this representation of uh, the set, which is the closure of all the finite maps, the TA maps of some P initial point or C. Typically, we pick one of the fixed points. Um, so I'll be using this notation TA. So this just means um, um, the A address um, is a vector of indices of you know, varying length, and we still apply the maps backwards, as usual, in function composition. Uh, so we can have finite or infinite addresses as well. Um, so a fin uh, denotes finite addresses. Okay, so uh, just to have a visual picture, if you start with the square, as the compact set, um, and you union it, union the two um, actions with two maps, Doing this repeatedly, um, iteratively, you will get an IFS fractal. So you can see here uh, one fixed point and another fixed point. So you can have um, uh, contractions which um, have logarithmic spiral trajectories, or even um, you know um, sort of these four core maps um, for which the rotation is zero. And actually, uh, such maps will be um, quite important, as you can see, because um, the fixed point belonging to such a map will remain an extremal point so it gets mapped, and that point alone actually generates the entire convex small just by mapping it according to T2, the second map. This is mm -hmm. Sorry? This is a self similar factor? Self similar, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, generated by uh, similitudes, so similarity transforms and the plane. Um, so what is the relevance? Well, for me personally, um, it's um, the um, fractal hyperplane intersection uh, problem or fractal line intersection in the plane, also known as slicing. Uh, Falconer and his group um, does quite a bit of work on that. Um, just recently had um, like a mini conference on it in England. Um, so 
this theorem was shown in um, this paper, it's one of my papers that uh, just uh, got published a month ago. Um, so if we define hyperdense as um, a fractal for which if you take a convex hall and you take the first level iterates, so this implication has to hold that any hyperplane that intersects the convex hall, meaning the relevant hyperplanes, would also need to um, intersect the iterates as well, the first level iterates. So, um, uh, and this is for any direction or any hyperplane, right? So, um, if, if um, a fractal has this property, then you can say that um, a hyperplane intersects hyperdense fractal. So, meaning at a certain fractal points, if and only if um, it intersects its convex hall. So, meaning any plane that intersects the convex hall will preserve this property down to uh, the lowest level, so to any point of the fractal. Um, so for this, uh, it's sort of assumed that we can compute the convex hall, but actually this problem is uh, not so trivial. Um, so um, the convex hall problem is relevant to uh, complex dimensions, which is um, uh, the work done by Pierce, Lampidus, uh, and collaborators. And so I'm uh, citing here Pierce's um, PhD thesis, um, and then. Um, it also becomes relevant for resolving the inverse problem of IFS fractals. So that was discussed by uh, these three authors. So they actually resolve the inverse problem, um, assuming that we know the complex form. Um, and it's also relevant to sample five tiles. So one, the cards and um, collaborators have written some papers on the complex form of. Um, Subfine tiles. <coughs> and it also comes into play, play in for self contacting IFS fees. So, if you want to achieve self contact um, of the first level iterates, then obviously what we need to look at is extreme points. So, man over frame. Uh, and also, Taylor and some you know, future authors have written. On that, so this paper is from like around 2000, um, and actually the exact converse also of the problem itself has been um, discussed in length by Kirat and Kosige. Kosige wrote a uh, master's thesis on this actually, <coughs> which is uh, second paper I'm citing. Okay, so what is the relevance to Fuglera's conjecture? Well, um, so this is. Fuglerda's conjecture, and um, since um, the subfine tiles has to have, to have a positive Lagrange measure, so we prefer it to be connected, and connectedness was linked to the convex hall problem by Mandelbrot and that frame. Um, so then we arrive at the convex hall problem. So how can we actually determine the exact convex hall, or at least for what classes? So there's a classification question involved. Um, and um, also, we need to examine whether or not the extrema will be you know, finite in number. All right, so actually, I'm going to be moving from a certain approach to another approach, so moving from the inside out to the outside in approach. So the inside out is just the bottom up generation that we have um, seen earlier, the uh, address generation of the fractal. So we are sort of uh, approximating uh, the convex hall from the inside, increasing the iteration level actually going to prove to be inefficient. Uh, so I'm switching to an outside-in approach. And this is actually an important uh, move, um, which is going to be a linear optimization approach. So I'm going to be looking for a periodic or eventually periodic addresses, and exactly for the reason on that figure, if, if we have a sort of this focal uh, periodicity, uh, then we can expect uh, that point to sort of generate the rest of the convex hall, um, as we'll see. So that's going to be the Armadillo method, and it will be a lot more efficient because we only need to determine one uh, extremal point, and that's going to generate the rest. Okay, so <coughs> what periodic extremal points? So what do we know about them? So periodicity is, of course, we have a finite part repeating in the address. Eventually periodic is that we have a finite part, B, initial part, and then we have a repeating part, X. Uh, so what is focal? So focal is when, according to that address, the angle uh, that the T 
tx map is going to um, map it is going to be zero. So it's the full form uh, mapping tx. So every uh, tx actually has this um, form. So it, 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 we have the px, which is the periodic point or the fixed point according to the tx map. Um, and we have a phi x, which is going to be just um, a real number, right? So a, a contracted number. Uh, there's not, not going to be a rotation anymore. Um, so uh, we have um, this lemma that um, if you have a periodic external point, then it must necessarily be focal. And basically the reason is that um, if it were not focal, because of the rotation, the non-zero rotation, um, basically we could um, map around the fixed point so it would not be an external point anymore. Okay, um, and then we have this important property for uh, extrema inverse iteration. So if you take any initial part or sort of truncation of the address of an external point, so this is the part, the initial part, uh, we can actually inverse iterate according to any truncation and we'll still get extremal points. So we can actually generate maybe an infinite number of other extremal points just by an inverse iteration. Um, and it's most important for the cycle. So the cycle for um, a periodic extremal point is periodic focal extremal point is um, uh, this PBA points because if we have PAB, um, so X equals AB, and if we um, flip and say PBA, so we'll take the fixed point according to the TBA. Um, that's just the inverse iterate by TA. Okay, so actually the cycle is uh, typically going to be a consecutive set of uh, extremal points. So we'll generate a very nice plate of extremal points this way, and um, mapping that plate around, you're going to generate the rest of the extremal points. So that's the Armadillo method session. Um, all right, so here's the classification part, so rational versus irrational particles. So fractal is, is rational if it has any focal points at all. If it doesn't have any, so meaning it can never occur that a finite address has a value of zero, so meaning a rotation of zero. If that can never occur, then that's an irrational fractal. And that's quite often the case, right? So um, you can probably see already that the fractal of unity, which is uh, the fractal of it, um, rotations that are roots of unity, so meaning the angle divided by 2 pi, two, two pi is a rational number, um, is also going to be a rational fractal. Right? So these are actually the nicest that we'll be examining the fractals of unity. Um, so these are some theorems. So uh, irrational fractals necessarily have an infinite number of schema. So meaning if there are no focal points, no focal maps, um, the fractal necessarily has an infinite number of extremes. So that's a hopeless, hopeless case because of self-similarity. At each um, vertex, the extrema will be clust clustering. Um, so since there are an infinite number, it's almost impossible to um, futile to try to determine the convex hull. Um, <coughs> and then we have continuity in angular parameters. So that's another theorem. So meaning we can just examine fractals of unity and approximate the convex hull of even irrational fractals, right? Um, and then we have this indicating lemma or theorem that um, a fractal of unity actually has eventually focal um, similar points. So that kind of indicates that um, the number of schema should be finite, but that's only a conjecture, should we? so we haven't been able to prove that. It seems kind of difficult, but um, I have partial ideas and results. All right, so <coughs> So the method for a simplest case when all the uh, rotation angles are equal, although the contraction factors can be different. Um, so for equiangular fractals, so we have um, these rotation angles which are 2 pi to p over m. So it's not dependent on the next k. It's, it's all equal for the rotation angles, whether the contraction factors can be different. Uh, so for such fractals, if you just map um, um, to the nth level, 
right? Because f equals hf, so if you map to the nth level, we still have f equals hmf. But h, what is hmf? That's actually generated by um, the nth level maps, but all the nth level maps are focal, so necessarily um, these single points of refractor will be a subset of the focal points of level m. So this is probably the most trivial case, um, the angular case. Uh, so even if, so if, if for this simple case, um, we sort of have a corollary uh, that extreme are finite. Uh, so it sort of follows from the method instead of um, knowing this a priori. So this is an a posteriori uh, result. So it's uh, not really reasonable to assume in advance um, that um, x d are finite. All right. So as we'll see, it sort of drops out from the methods as a consequence that these things are finite, but any method which pre-assumes or presupposes that these things are finite are not the result. All right, and there are some methods like that in the literature. All right, so um, um, what else here? Yeah, so um, th this uh, result is basically relevant. Some of fine tiles, it's, uh, I'm not claiming to be a no this to be a novel result. It's um, you know, Stickarts and Wong have mentioned it in their paper. Um, so it's sort of a, a simple result. Um, it's sort of illustrative, actually, just uh, so that we can see how focal points, focal periodic points, are important. You know, fundamental to the complex form. All right. So, <coughs> what would be a more, a lot more general method? Um, well, not just for fractals of unity, but actually rational fractals, but for fractals of unity, we have that result that all extrema are eventually focal. So um, that's um, kind of nice to know, because then this method will be um, reasonable. So it's actually by Kirat and Kosygin, and I kind of simplified it, so I'll have it in my paper as well. So uh, we select um, a large initial level, and then we look at the LF level iterates of some initial seed. So the, the total of the total length of the address has to be L. Um, and we are looking for uh, repeating focal parts, but then the, um, the tail, the D, has to be sort of a truncation of that C. So meaning it's a sub address of that C. And we are looking for focal cases. So meaning uh, the value of C or the, the angles, the summation of the angles is zero. Um, so we try to satisfy this um, inclusion property that um, the Hutchinson is a subset of the convex form because if this holds, you know, just iteratively you can prove that then uh, the extrema of the fractal will be the extrema of um, of um, E L. All right. So because these are actually the blown up extrema points for the Aleph level. So we blow them up um, for PLC. Okay, so uh, this method is not too efficient. Um, I'm detailing the inefficiency in the paper as well. Um, it's not too robust, so generating from inside out, uh, we may not actually um, reach the relevant extrema, or there might be um, too many, or checking this inclusion property may not be reasonable computationally. Uh, there could be significant error, and we may erroneously uh, conclude uh, too early for a too early level that uh, we have actually found uh, the full complex hall. Okay, so as we will see, um, there's, there are cases when the period of the focal part is actually going to, going to be like 262 or like 41, very high. So in the examples, very high iteration levels, which you can't possibly generate from bottom up. So we definitely have to switch to an outside-in approach, so a linear optimization approach. All right, so this is what it will roughly look like. Uh, so we have um, a target direction uh, orthogonal to this uh, line. So we bump into a, uh, an extremal point. Uh, we generate a cycle by uh, inverse iteration. So that's going to be a plate, so meaning a set of consecutive extrema. And then we can just um, um, map this plate around to get the rest of the extrema. 
Okay? So basically one maximum point will generate the rest. So this is the armadillo method. And armadillo because as you map the plate around, it can overlap. Just like in the armor of an armadillo. Alright, so um, so I've just explained um, how this works. Um, so um, th there is a method in the paper that um, um, shows you know how to pick um, the target direction um, for a certain class of fractals. Not all fractals of unity, but a certain subclass. Um, um, and then we need to find a um, sort of strictly full polysomal point that all indices occur in the address. The reason for that is so that the plate will be, you know, spanning the large enough angle for the overlaps to work. Um, and um, how to deduce the order of um, extrema in the cycle is also given. And so basically, uh, this plate will generate the rest of the complex hall. So um, uh, basically, this is for regular fractals. A regular fractal is just a fractal which has at least one strictly focal extremal point uh, for which the cycle is consecutive. Um, this is, um, we don't, I don't know how to um, check this a priori yet, um, but once we try a candidate direction, um, there's a method that's kind of hard to check if the fact is regular or not. Um, okay, so the actual linear optimization algorithm that all this hinges on, so as far as efficiency, um, this is how it works. So basically it works with an initial bounding circle, uh, which has to be an ideal bounding <coughs> circle in the, set, in the sense that the center is in the convex hall in the interior of the convex hall. Um, and the first level iterates are contained within the circle. So the first level iterates of the circle are a subset of the full circle. So if you take the Alice level iterates of that circle, um, this you can discard a bunch of parts of uh, the fractal. So for instance, this circle or this iterate dominates this one. Why? Because um, the target value uh, can potentially be higher in this subfractal, right? Because uh, there are still points uh, beyond the central target value here. Uh, so you can, I can, I think you can see visually how this works. Um, so uh, basically, at every iteration, we'll have an arc max uh, set, set of non-dominated addresses, um, and then we'll be refining that into a or recursively. All right, so some examples. Um, so for that particular uh, fractal with these parameters, you can actually uh, determine um, explicit formula for uh, the full polysimal point using the formula we have seen earlier for periodic points. Um, so this is an explicit uh, exact determination of the complex form. Right? So, and also the rest uh, can also be found by inverse iteration, the rest of the cycle, and then map the So all the points are determined exactly. Right? Or for the Levi C curve, uh, twin dragon. Uh, now this fractal is uh, the one I was speaking about earlier. So it has actually, the cycle has 262 elements. Um, because the focal address of that maximizer is um, of length 262. So basically, if we were to do an inside out method, the earlier generation general method, uh, it will not be possible because um, we can't simply map the points to like 262 to find the first focal uh, address which is going to work. So it's just not possible. It's not easy. So we do have to do uh, an outside-in approach, maybe linear optimization, maybe this armadillo method. It just certainly works for this fractal. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to finish. Um, so just another example. Again, you can see the plate here. So it spans from up from here to here, uh, or sorry, from here all the way to here. And then when you map it around, uh, you will get the rest of the schema. 
um, or this is the plate over here. Um, and this is sort of a, a nightmare case for the general method um, because um, with inside out generation, you may not able, even be able to reach the relevant extreme at all. So um, this is the 20th level uh, iteration. And um, the length of this focal address is actually um, uh, 41. Uh, the way I know that is looking at, the it's actually dependent, so the length of the address is dependent on the rotation angles. So if you add 6 plus 35, that's 41 divided by the latest common divisor. So that's the formula, um, which is 1. So you get 41. So uh, in order to find the first focal address, um, the candidates, uh, you need to at least iterate to uh, 41, which is computationally not reasonable. Uh, but with this RMDO method, you can actually uh, find a problem at um, Or you can have even uh, worse nightmares where uh, you have uh, sort of this fact all. And so visually, you would guess that this is the Cromach's law, but it's actually um, a little bit further out. Uh, so it's predicted by uh, the RMDO method. This is the plate. It's very small. And um, it's, it's like um, a nice... Uh, curve, very nice differentiable curve, but um, it's actually not. Uh, so. um, and that's actually um, uh, like one of the things I've been thinking about is that is the convex hall uh, differentiable um, for irrational fractals? Because, you know, the, the extrema uh, sort of cluster in around each other. So, um, I think it's a reasonable conjecture to ask uh, if um, the Comax law will be C1 maybe or whatever. So uh, if you generate the same fractal, not from uh, one of the fixed points as seeds, but actually this extremal point, which I determined here, and this is what you're going to get. So you can actually see that uh, the fractal doesn't go beyond the Comax law. So you can see that. Kind of barely gets generated here, and there are some black points here. So that point will still be generated as well. Okay, um, so here are some of the papers I mentioned. Um, so, thank you. So actually, the, yeah, so the general method, um, so that's exponential, right? Because you would need to uh, yeah, generate um, basically at least up to 262 um, iteration level uh, to find the first focal part for the general method. And then you would blow up uh, those extrema of the 262 level. Um, so that's like, you know, if you're working with a two map fractal, that's 2 to the 262. So, uh, uh, and that can be resolved all with the Armonia method. So, there you just basically um, uh, push uh, uh, target direction. Do you have any example of infinitely many? Infinitely many? Uh, yeah, so an irrational fractal uh, necessarily has an infinite number of minimal points. Now, it is not known, the converse is not known whether for rational fractals, is it guaranteed? that all rational fractals have a finite number of external points. So that's actually a conjecture. And it's not even known for fractals of unity, which is an even simpler case. So actually, I gave that conjecture. Is it, is, is it true that a fractal of unity has a finite number of external points? So that's an open problem. Yeah. If you have an idea. Or, um, yeah, yeah. So my paper will be up on archive in a week, so we can actually look at all the notations. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, let's stand up here.